In this video, I'd like to continue talking about multiplying and dividing complex numbers using Euler's formula. And we have the formulas for multiplying and dividing two complex numbers when we write them in their polar form, where we have the magnitude and the direction using the angle measured relative to the positive real axes. And when we multiply these numbers, we multiply the magnitudes and add their angles. And likewise, when we divide, we find the quotient of their magnitudes and we subtract the angle of the denominator from the angle in the numerator. But we saw in the last video that this expression here is actually equal to e to the i times by theta, where e is that 2.71828 and so on. It goes on forever. It's an irrational number like pi. And we know that i is just the square root of minus 1. But this is known as Euler's formula, that e to the i theta is equal to this expression here, which essentially is the direction of our complex number on the complex plane. And we can rewrite a number in its exponential form as the magnitude of that complex number multiplied by its direction e to the i times theta 1. And likewise, we can do the same thing for this complex number z2. And when we multiply these numbers, we still multiply their magnitudes, but we can use exponent properties to essentially add the two angles to each other. And we get e to the i times theta 1 plus theta 2. And this is just a more compact way of writing this same expression in its polar form. This form right here is known as its exponential form. And likewise, this division here can be rewritten as the quotient of their magnitudes, their moduli, and multiplied by e to the i times theta 1 minus theta 2. So we still find the quotient of the magnitudes and we still subtract the angles when dealing with division. And I'd like to look at specific example problems for both multiplying and dividing complex numbers using these forms. So let's say that we have an example where we will multiply two complex numbers and then we will divide them. So let's say that z1 has a magnitude of 2 and it has a direction. I'll write it in its polar form first of the cosine of 45 plus i times by the sine of 45. And if we want, we can put this into rectangular form as root 2 plus root 2 times by i. But in its exponential form, we could write this as 2 multiplied by e to the i times 45 degrees, though usually this is written in radians. We could put 45 degrees there if we want. But if we want to put it into radians, we just need to remember that 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. So we can also write this as 2 times e to the i times by pi over 4. And let me make a little bit of space and we can write our second complex number, which we will call z2. We will say this is 6 multiplied by the cosine of 120 degrees plus i times by the sine of 120. Let me put my units up here. And if we want, we can also write this in its rectangular form, where this is equal to minus 3 plus 3 root 3 times by i. And in its exponential form, this is just 6 multiplied by e to the i times by 120 degrees. Though if we want to put it into radians, we can convert knowing that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. So this would be 2 pi over 3 radians. And in its exponential form, this would be 6 times e to the i times by 2 pi over 3. And again, that unit would be radians. Now we want to multiply and divide these complex numbers. So we can do that using their exponential forms now. And again, these exponential forms using Euler's formula are just 
more compact ways of writing the polar form. It still involves the magnitude and its angle, its direction. So when we do z1 times by z2, we will still multiply their magnitudes. So now we're looking at the exponential form in radians of both of these complex numbers. We multiply their magnitudes. We have 2 times 6 and we add their angles. So we have 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And if we simplify, we get 12 multiplied by e to the i times by this sum here, which we can find a denominator of 12. And this would become 4 times 2 pi since we multiply the denominator by 4. So we get 8 pi. We multiply this numerator by 3. 8 pi plus 3 pi would be 11 pi radians. And if we did that in degrees, it would be 120 plus 45, which would be 165, which is the same as 11 pi over 12 radians. And if we also consider dividing these complex numbers, works the same way as dividing in polar form. We divide their magnitudes. And actually, let me do the reverse of this, though we can do this one, but I would like a whole number magnitude. Let's do z2 over z1. We have 6 divided by 2. We find the quotient of their magnitudes, and we subtract the angles. We have e to the i times by the angle of the numerator, which is 120 degrees, but let's write this in radians. We have 2 pi over 3 radians, and we will subtract the angle of the denominator, which is pi over 4 radians. And simplifying, we get a magnitude of 3, and our direction will now be this difference here. We want to find a denominator of 12 again, so we multiply this top by 4 and this numerator by 3, and we get 8 pi minus 3 pi, which is 5 pi. But in degrees, we could have done 120 minus 45, which would be 75 degrees, which is equivalent to this right here. And you can see, like I mentioned, that doing these calculations using Euler's formula just saves the amount of notation that we need to write down. We don't have to write down this expression every time since e to the i times 45 degrees is equivalent to this and it just saves a little bit of time. But as we'll see, when we raise complex numbers to different powers, it is easier to interpret it using exponential forms since then we can just use the properties of exponents. Whereas with the polar form, it's not overly difficult, but it is a little bit more tedious to fully understand the results. So we will continue this talking about the powers of complex numbers in a later video.